Well, what can I say? This is a near perfect sale. We have something for you. Come on, jump in. Okay. All down All right, there. German. Come on. And it appears that pretty much everything is closed, so we wanted to check in. I think we might have to wait until Monday. Got oh, professionals yeah. looking at it. It is a worm, yeah? Well, I said we were going to do things a little bit different this time uh, since we've already done the Anambus and covered them in our vlog. So this is a little bit different sailing. Last time we were here, there wasn't much wind at all. We were approaching the transitional period, um, but we're still in the southeast, southwest monsoon. It's the southwest, but we call it southeast because that's generally where the winds come from. And uh, it just means that we can get the sails out like we are doing right now. Got the mizzen and the Yankee out, and we're doing hitting five knots, which is very comfortable. Thank you very much. Um, there's another boat coming in there. There were two boats at anchor. I think this is something that we're going to see more of over the next few years is the popularity of uh, the Anambus as a cruising territory. Can't blame them for coming here. Well good to know if we do come back this way we will have a look at it but um, our plans are through to um, another two or three weeks here and then we're heading over to Borneo over. Oh, okay, okay. Um, we're uh, I'm here for another another month. My daughter's arriving in uh, three days, so uh, probably see you around. So the wind's picked up again, which is great. We were in the lee of the island, so we dropped down a bit, but uh, the wind's come round. We're now broad reach, so we've got the Yankee fully out. We've got the mizzen out. Can't be bothered with the main because we're doing five and a half knots, which is nice and comfortable. It's great. Um, also, quite excitingly. On the VHF we've been chatting to three boats, one of whom is Keith and Tylee on Just Dance who we haven't seen since, god I've forgotten when we last saw them, it was quite some time ago, we keep missing them, uh, so then there's them. Then we spoke to a Patreon called Paul on Making Time, he has an oyster and uh, he's just arrived as we were leaving so unfortunately we missed him. And then another couple on Eerie Spirit, great name, uh, also in Jamaja. So tomorrow it seems as if it's Independence Day in the Anambus. Not quite sure what that means, but uh, we're now thinking maybe we should get straight to Tarempa um, for the celebrations because everyone's been talking about it on the VHF as if it's some kind of big thing. So um, we'll see how we get on with the wind today. We didn't plan to get to Tarempa, it was 30 miles away. We were just aiming for the next island, which is 10 miles away. But with a wind like this, uh, there's no reason why we can't get to the capital uh, in daylight. So let's just see how we get on. Meanwhile, most important job right now is this. Is there any place you want? Well, what can I say? This is a near perfect sail, really. I mean, glorious sunshine, a little bit of cloud cover, keep the temperature down. Got this uh, nice southerly wind and a bit of a 
gentle swirl, it's not too bad at all. Got all the sails out, well, apart from the stay sail because we're going downwind. Don't put it out when we're going downwind. And uh, bobbing along, sort of hit six knots occasionally, between four and five. I mean, what more could you ask? Well, another 20 minutes to go before we reach our first waypoint, which takes to the corner of Tarempa, which is just through there. It's been a marvellous sail, average 4.6, top speed 6 point something, uh, but most importantly, the Queen is very happy and content. She's just woken up, which is just as well because she was sitting on the, the main sheet lines. She's now getting excited because Lizzie's taken in the lines. Yeah, unsuccessful day of fishing, of course, but it doesn't stop her from willing a fish to jump on that hook at the last minute. the sunny delights of Tarempa. We're back. The sun is, uh, well, we've still got a couple of hours left of light, uh, but this is new. Still being built. Uh, some friends are at anchor over there. And then we've got uh, Kim and Mark aboard ZZ. Uh, they're tied up to a mooring buoy. Mooring buoys are also new in Tarempa and Mark has very kindly volunteered to come and meet us in the dinghy and uh, take our line for us. I think I'm getting in the way here. So we have uh, various fish and meat, chicken curries. Uh, we've got potato. Uh, we've got tempeh, which is soy protein, sort of mashed up. Mixture of tempeh and fish. More vegetable dishes here. Coconut, vegetable, kingfish, curry. Oh, it's absolutely delicious. It really is. Cost about two quid. Do you recognise this? Do you remember this from our previous blogs? This is uh, Tarempa High Street. Uh, there's just one difference. Well, there's two things. First of all, it's, it's even more busy than it always was. And that's because it's Independence Day, which leads me on to the second thing. And that's these lights. They've just put up these lights uh, last night, apparently. And over the next few days, we're going to be seeing some celebrations, festivals, parades, uh, games. I think a few, most people have, will have uh, school and uh, work off for a couple of days whilst they celebrate Indonesia's independence. Lizzie's favourite fruit, these are mangosteens. And it's obviously in season at the moment, they are delicious. If you've never had a mangosteen, have one. Hello. Hi. Where are they gone? We're going for a coffee, we're going for a nice fresh coffee. Durian. Ah, durian. Yeah, durian. Love durian. 
So after a delicious lunch and a very strong coffee, and by the way, we just bought a kilo of coffee beans from the coffee shop, uh, we thought we'd do some checking in. We're not going to bore you with this procedure. Do you remember how noisy Terempa was? That hasn't changed. Uh, yeah, so we did all this last time when we last visited here on the video, so we're not going to bore you with that. But we just went to go to immigration and immigration is closed presumably because of the Independence Day celebrations. So we thought we'd go and check out the Harbour Master, just to at least show Willing, and we'll see if he's open. So it's Saturday, and it's the beginning of the celebration of Independence, and it appears that pretty much everything is closed. So we wanted to check in. I think we might have to wait until Monday. Uh, we don't mind, it's great here. Whatever they say on their lovely videos is not true, but um, this is um, the truth. <laughs> this is recycling. This is good. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think there's another layer. Oh, you can do another layer. Do another layer. Hello. Hello. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> right, this is the toilet. I think there's someone in here at the moment. Nope, there's no one here. Right, here we go. This is your typical uh, toilet in Tarempa. It is literally a hole in the floor. Now I'm about to go for a wee and I think I should turn the video off whilst I do this. Just give me a second. Okay, business done. Um, that's the flushing mechanism. It's quite sophisticated. It's a big bucket with a little bucket inside and uh, that's used for washing, washing your bits. I mean, that's a pretty efficient toilet, isn't it? We have something for you. Come on, jump in. Okay. All down All right, there. German. Come on. Can you explain to me oh, what a Danny Nanju is? I don't know. What, what is yeah, no, Oh. No. Look at this one. Tits. Big tits. Oh, oh shit. shit. Man, you can rub your in between. In between? Yeah. You can what? You can yeah. rub your what? What? Well, you can't you catch it. Well, theoretically, <laughs> I mean, it was. Uh, <laughs> Today we have a parade. We start at 7:30. Parade of uh, Independence Day in here. So which is I think in here uh, the most a lot of people in here uh, from tourism from from local people as well. Yep. So here we are on the main square, um, which is covered in sand, and this is where the various organisations, I suppose we could say are getting together to do their parade. And it's a mixture of schools, um, government offices, uh, maybe we see customs and immigration even parading as well, which would explain why all the offices are closed. They've been practicing for two or three weeks now. We've been hearing them practice every morning. <laughs> PKK, Ukrasasi, 
It's starting to get a bit more noisy now. Lots of happy smiley faces in the crowd, but I think everyone's desperate to get parading. We've had uh, talking now for a good half an hour of speeches. Uh, the, they haven't done the national anthem yet, but they've gone through the the, the five rules of the Anambus, I think it was, I think I made that up. Uh, but someone explained that they were reciting the rules and regulations of the island, including no drugs and so on. Um, and then we've just been walking through and seeing lots of happy people here. But it's starting to get a bit warmer now, starting to heat up. And uh, I think we, uh, we want to get moving. After the parade, we have been invited to have free food at uh, La Luna restaurant, which is a very nice restaurant just down there, so we look forward to that as well. As you can probably hear behind me, there is still a lot more to come. Unfortunately, I just stumped my toe on a steak and it's bleeding like hell, so I need to go and uh, tend to that. We can do the coffee. It's starting to get hot now, it's starting to heat up. Uh, still lots of people lining the streets though, waiting to see their friends and family uh, come through on that parade. We've seen all kinds of things. I think my favourite was probably the little kid on a bicycle disguised as an aeroplane with stabilizers and he was really struggling cycling through the sand uh, followed shortly by a pink fairy on a pink bike uh, quite a few bikes disguised as uh, vehicles we've seen tanks and uh, well we've seen, we've seen all sorts of things it's been good fun it's been really good fun time for a coffee celebrations over with uh, now to more serious matters we're going to the local hospital I appear to have uh, gained a little passenger on my foot. Sandworm, hookworm, something like that. Have a look at this, it's pretty horrible. Got the professionals looking at it. It is a worm, yeah? From, okay, sandworm. So correctly diagnosed by Liz, it is a hookworm and apparently there are 500 to 700 million cases of this a year. It's very common apparently, I've never had it before. It's quite interesting isn't it? Yeah, it's from, from sand. Of course we're walking through sand all the time barefooted. I don't know whether that's the entire length of the worm or if it's smaller and it's just worked its way through, but very nice isn't it? mid-afternoon and we're just going for a little wander around Tarempa town uh, obviously it's quite hot at the moment so not many people out and about unless they're on their scooters most people taking advantage of the shade but 
just interesting looking at some of the architecture around here. Liz pointed out that some of this looks quite Mediterranean. Of course, we've got quite a few Mediterranean flowers uh, growing on the uh, walls of houses, but the houses themselves also look quite Mediterranean as well. Have a look at this. In an episode a couple of weeks ago, you saw us sailing through piracy waters and we got lots of great feedback on that. Uh, but you also saw us taking on a lot of water and of course we could rely on you great people out there on YouTube with your excellent comments, ideas and suggestions because we were a bit stumped. We didn't know where the water came from. A few of you came up with some great ideas. Uh, Henry Reed said, I think the fresh water breather is spilling water. Um, it's a good suggestion and it's perfectly feasible that it could be the fresh water uh, because the first thing we did was to taste the water and it was very definitely salt water so it wasn't anything to do with the fresh water. I've mentioned that it could have been the rubbing stroke and Michael Wiggins says we had that issue which took months to fix. After removing teak bungs to expose the bolts beneath I found that there was a bolt missing. A one hour fix for an issue which caused major angst and cleanup in the previous months. Uh, still unsure about that. I don't think it's the rubbing streak because we've got some other ideas. Uh, Sailing Solo and Ant and Sid, uh, they said, what about the Hauser pipe or the anchor locker? Uh, you could be getting a lot of water in there, especially as you're pounding through that water. Um, it's another sensible suggestion. Uh, the only thing is, is that our anchor locker is actually a sealed bulkhead. So in theory, there should be no way that water can get beyond the anchor locker itself. However, there is a tiny little hole in there and with the amount of water we were going through, it could be possible. Uh, also, we've got a conduit, a cable wiring conduit that runs the entire length of the boat. And it's possible that water could have got into the inside locker behind that bulkhead and traveled down there. So we haven't written that one off yet. That could be a possibility. Um, Virgil McCluskey says, could the leak be your hull or deck joint? And LKM says duck, uh, deck to hull joint, uh, could be the tow rail. Uh, Paul Collins says lifeline stanchion base. Um, now again, these are all sensible suggestions, but considering we've been in some pretty torrential squalls, we've seen a lot of heavy rain. Uh, we don't have those kind of leaks happening under normal circumstances. This was very definitely happening when we were healed over. So I don't think it's any of those. So all good suggestions. Um, one thing that we have noticed recently is a possible siphon issue that we have on one of our bilge outlets. We have two, one is a large uh, gauge hose that's connected to the manual bilge pump in the cockpit. Uh, but the second one is connected to a, a pump, an uh, electric pump, which of course has a bilge switch on it. And what we've noticed is that uh, even when we sit at anchor, sometimes that creates a siphon. Now, of course, that bilge pipe does run up way above the waterline and it's shaped in a big U shape. But what we've found is that the bilge drains and then after about six hours or so, the bilge pump goes off again. And we sometimes to clean our bilges, we put uh, detergent in that. We found that the same water appeared to be coming back every six months, uh, six hours. So it's quite possible we have a siphon issue, so we've got to look at that and obviously buy an anti-siphon valve for that hose. 